Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Mr. Cobalt and in this video I'm going to be going over how to calculate the equilibrium constant of a reaction from the electropotential of the cell. So this is a reaction that's happening in a, an electrochemical cell. You have the you know, two beakers. One side is your, elect, uh, your reduction reaction. The other side is your uh, cathode, I'm sorry, your, your uh, oxidation reaction. And so you have oxidation and re uh, reduction happening at the same time. And you've got this current going through the wire. And you want to know what the K value from this reaction is. Okay, so here's the reaction that we're given. So they want us to use the tabulated electrode potentials to calculate the, uh, the uh, uh, equilibrium constant of this reaction here. And this reaction, just like the one prior to it, before I had copper reacting with acid, uh, acidic solution <clears throat> to form copper two plus ions and hydrogen gas. This time we have iron metal being thrown into an acidic solution with H plus in it. And that's going to be uh, turned into iron three plus and to form hydrogen gas. So last time we saw that when it was with copper, the K value that we uh, found was very, very small, indicating that this, uh, that the reaction was very heavily weighted towards the reactant side. So very much stay on this side, meaning that copper is not very reactive to acidic solution. But what about iron? Let's take a look at iron. Then. So the first thing we want to do is figure out the oxidation states and then divide up the reaction here into its uh, reduction reactions and its uh, oxidation reactions. So the oxidation states of elements in their standard states is zero. So that would apply to solid iron, solid iron and gaseous hygiene. And so that's going to be zero and this is going to be zero. And then for monoatomic ions like H plus and Fe, uh, F3, Fe3 plus, the um, the oxidation state is the same as its uh, charge. So the oxidation state of H is a, uh, the plus one, and for the iron here, it's a three plus. So from this, we can see that iron is going from a zero oxidation state to a three plus oxidation state. So therefore, it is losing electrons and becoming positive. That is oxidation. So iron is undergoing oxidation. So we're going to write this here. So this is going to be uh, two irons, right? Or if we, if we write down, yeah. So we have two irons here, solid. And that's going to form two Fe3 pluses. So that's going to go to here. So we have two Fe3 plus. And again, we're losing electrons. So how many electrons are lost? Well, each we're, we're having two atoms of iron. They're forming two ions. Each ion has a three plus charge. So that means that each iron atom lost three electrons. So that's a total of six electrons. So that's going to have six electrons lost. So here's our uh, oxidation half reaction for this reaction we're given. And then the rest of it is going to be reduction. So we, we can see that with the uh, hydrogen here goes from a plus to zero. So it is gaining electrons to become less positive. So that is reduction. So remember the mnemonic device. Here are mnemonic devices for figuring out whether you've got oxidation or reduction. So Leo Ger, oil rig, uh, loss of electrons is oxidation. Gain of electrons is reduction, or oil rig, oxidation is loss of electrons, reduction is gain of electrons, so that'll help you remember that. Um, so here, uh, the hydrogen is being reduced, so we have two, actually we have six H pluses, and since we have six, and then we're going to form H2, that means... Uh, each hydrogen is receiving 
a, an electron. So we're going to add six electrons there, and that's going to help us form our three H2 gas. Okay, so here's our reduction and oxidation half reactions for our uh, overall reaction here in our chemical electrical, electrochemical cell. And so now that we have this split up, we can figure out what the, uh, the standard electro potential of the cell is um, by adding the uh, reactions together. So here is our tabulated values. So what I did is I took these two out of the table. So you have this long ta uh, table of values for uh, electro potential values for each of a bunch of uh, reduction half reactions. So I just took the two out that I was interested in. And so you'll see that H plus is higher than F3 minus as far as uh, reduction goes. So here you can see that since hydrogen H plus is higher uh, in the table, it is more readily going to be reduced compared to Fe3 plus. So if you remember the mnemonic here, neo per, more negative is oxidation, more positive is reduction. So here going down, you become more negative. So as you become more negative, right, more negative is oxidation. So this is more negative than this. So this means that this is going to undergo oxidation. So that's important to remember. And you see here that indeed in our reaction, it does undergo a reaction for, it does undergo oxidation for the reaction we have. So it's going the way that we would expect it to go for a spontaneous reaction. So we would expect this to be spontaneous. So therefore, delta G, the standard free energy change, would be uh, negative. Uh, but we're not going to calculate that. We're going to calculate the, uh, the equilibrium constant. So what do we do? So we have reduction here. Um, so hydrogen H plus is undergoing reduction as we would expect. So then the, the standard electrode potential for this reaction is, of course, what it says in the table. 0, 0.00 volts. And then for here, we're doing oxidation. So we flipped it. Here's it's, it's in reduction, and we're given the reduction electrode potential. Um, but we need to flip it for oxidation because in our equation here, iron is being oxidized. So we got to flip it. That means that we are, if we're flipping the way this is going, then we need to change the sign. So this is going to be an electrode potential of, instead of negative, it's going to be a positive 0.036 volts. When we add these two equations together, right, the six electrons on the product side, six electrons on the reactant side, those are going to cancel out. And we add these together, we get our equation here, right? So we get two Fe solid plus the 6H plus aqueous gives us 2Fe3 plus aqueous plus the 3H2 gas. So since adding these two together gives us our equation that we're interested in here, then adding these two together will give us the overall standard electro potential of the cell since this is the reaction happening in the cell so then add these two together we get zero oops we get the e of the cell is equal to these two add together which is plus 0 0.036 volts so that is the way you calculate the electro potential of the cell for this reaction. Now, the other way, um, I have this equation here. Basically, what you do is you can plug these values directly from the table, not from here, but from the table. This is your tabulated 
uh, electrode potentials of the reduction half reactions. So if I take these values and plug them into the equation, I get the same answer. So you get, so E of the cell, the standard electrode potential of the cell is equal to the electrode potential of the cathode. Now, this is what's happening. The reduction happens at the cathode, right? So remember, a red cat and an ox. Reduction happens at the cathode. Oxidation at the anode. So here, anode, cathode, reduction. So this is zero. So we're going to take 0, 0.00 volts. And according to the equation here, we're going to subtract the electrode potential uh, that's happening uh, of the reaction, the half reaction that's happening at the anode, which is the iron. So here's the iron. So we're going to subtract out the negative 0.036 volts. Negative times a negative is a positive. We're adding them together and we get a positive 0.036 volts. So same as before. So this equation comes from the fact that we're adding these two together and we had to flip the iron around to do the oxidation. And so when we flip it around, we change the sign. And so that's what this is doing here. It's changing the sign. So same thing. Now we can plug our standard electrode potential into this equation here. So we're going to have E, uh, the standard electrode potential is 0.036. So that's going to be 0.036 volts is going to be equal to the 0.0592 volts, 0.0592 nine two volts over n n is the moles of electrons that's being transferred in the reaction now so here you can see it's six electrons six electrons now i want to point out here here you have two electrons and three electrons so in the reaction you have to have a, an equal number of electrons and that's where you can see the balance of charge uh, so remember from my videos, when you're balancing redox reactions, you have to balance the number of, uh, of, you have to balance the number of atoms and you have to balance charge. And that's where the electrons come in, but you got to make sure that the electrons for both half of the reactions are equal. And so you can see here from our e equation here, we got them equal, right? So that's where the two comes in here and the three comes in there. Okay, so we ended up multiplying this equation by 3, right? But remember, when you multiply the equation by 3, um, that doesn't change the electrode potential. The standard electrode potential stays the same. Even though we multiply this by 3, that's still 0. Same thing here. Even though we multiply this by 2, this stays negative 0.036. So multiplying your equation by a factor does not affect your electrodes, your standard electrode potential. So now that we have this uh, in our equation here, we have six electrons, six electrons. So this is going to be six for the number of moles of your electrons being transferred in the reaction. And that's going to be multiplied by the log of K. Once again, we would divide both sides by 0.0. .0 592 volts divided by 2. And we're going to divide this by the same thing, 0 0.0592 volts divided by, oops, not 2. That should be a 6 divided by 6 divided by 6. And so if we come over here and rewrite this, then we're, this cancels out, by the way. So all of that cancels out. So now we have log of K equal to this. Now, this divided by this fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So I can flip this and multiply. So then this is going to be, oops, let me make this clear. So here the log 
of k is going to be equal to this 0 0.0, 0 0.036 volts, but then multiplied by the reciprocal 6 over 6 over 0 0.0592, 0 0.0592. Volts. So now I have the log of K is equal to this. Now all I need to do is calculate this out for my next step. And we get uh, log of K is equal to what I get 3.648. So a positive 3.648. Okay, so now I have log k equal to this. So the way to undo this, I don't have room up here. Maybe I have a little bit of room. So now I can raise this as a, as a power of 10. So let me do over here. So I'm going to rewrite both of the sides, and this has a power of 10, and this has a power of 10. So log k, so 10 to the log k power is equal to, and then I'll have 10 to the power of this. So positive 3.648. And so when I write this, the log and the 10 cancel out, so I'm going to bring it up here for the finale. K, so now I get K left over. K is equal to 10 to the positive 3.648. And then all I do is I, on my calculator, figure out what that is. And when I do, I get 4.45. 4.45 times 10 to the third power. So then this is your equilibrium constant for this reaction. Now you can see that from the copper reaction, my last problem I did, when we took copper and reacted with the acid, the K value was like 10 to the negative 12. Very, very small, meaning that you would have very little product formed and most of it would be in this form, meaning that very little of your iron, or I'm sorry, your, your copper is going to react spontaneously with the acid, right? Um, but in this case, K is very large. It's like uh, 4,450. So that's very large compared to copper. So in this case, it heavily favors the products, meaning that iron uh, much more readily is going to react with the acid than uh, copper is. So it's going to readily form this and going to form your hydrogen gas. So that tells you a lot about this. Um, so that's it for this video, and I hope you enjoyed the, uh, solving this problem. If you enjoyed this video, if this was helpful, if, this, if you learned something from this video, then please, by all means, share the video with your friends, like the video, hit that like button. Also, make sure you subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell, and when you do, make sure you click all so you can be notified by all the videos I put out. You won't miss anything. And finally, put a comment down below in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Ask me questions. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for joining me, and have a great day.